Welcome to part two of the Malaysian Bullet Journal setup for the month of July. So as I have just stated, this is part two of the setup. If you haven't seen part one, do remember to check that one out first as there's probably a lot more that I explore in the first video. And these are the final pages set up today. So starting with my mind map page, which I know is um, a crowd favorite and it's certainly my favorite as well. I love drawing people. And on this page, I always like to try and find a famous or a well-known or just someone from the culture that I'm studying and then illustrate them on one half of the spread. So I really love my journals to be an exploration of techniques and different mediums, anything that is going to challenge my art skills while planning still for the month ahead. So on this page, I do like to practice my portrait skills. And for this portrait, I decided to focus on a lady called Michelle Yeoh. So when I'm researching this page and who I'm going to illustrate on here, I tend to Google out of interest and for the research, basically famous people from Malaysia or um, interesting women or, you know, well-known women, things like that. And the first person that came up and really stood out to me was Michelle Yeoh. And you may recognize her. I certainly did um, as soon as I saw her because she's been in so many movies I am familiar with. Some of the big ones that stood out to me were Memoirs of a Geisha, Tomorrow Never Dies, um, Crazy Rich Asians, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, and that Christmas movie, which I can never remember the name of, that I really liked. Oh, Last Christmas. Um, that was really cool. Um, yeah, so just seeing how many movies she'd been in and just learning a little bit more about who she is was fun to me. And then she's such a beautiful lady. So I was keen to get illustrating her for this page. So Michelle's film history did start back in the 90s and she was known for her action films or martial art films um, based in Hong Kong cinema. And that is where she started getting international stardom, I guess. She did all her own stunts and became the action queen that she is known for today. Funnily enough, she actually started ballet dancing at the age of four and always wanted to do ballet as her career. Um, but she had a spinal injury and then so she sort of channeled her energy into other art forms. And how funny that she ended up becoming like a martial arts master. I found that pretty interesting. Um, she also won at the age of 20 the Miss Malaysia World Contest. So that was in 1983. And then it was after that that she was in a commercial with Jackie Chan and sort of entered the cinema world with a movie called Yes Madam and that was in 1985. So that's really when her career really took off in that direction. And I just thought she was a perfect, perfect example of um, a Malaysian beauty for on this page. So what I wanted to do with her um, portrait is actually entwine it with some ornate designs based on batik fabric patterns. So Malaysian batik is basically a process of dyeing the fabric after a lot of wax has been applied in various patterns over the fabric. And then when you, once the wax has hardened, you soak it into the dye and the dye will go everywhere except where the wax was, leaving these beautiful intricate patterns everywhere. It's really beautiful stuff. I just Googled batik and a whole bunch of gorgeous patterns came up, a lot of gold, just lots of intricate designs that I just, it just sparked joy for me. So I was like, I must cover this entire page in batik. Um, so I sort of decided to skip any body parts of her, just do the head and then sort of entwine the whole background into her shirt and her headband sort of encapsulating it. And I think this just really makes it more interesting than just seeing the face on there. And I had so much fun just designing my own little um, patterns based on what I saw. And yeah, and then colored them in all the colors that I felt like using. It was just a really nice therapeutic page, actually. If you're looking for something nice and mindful to do, just try creating some batik pattern, pat ooh, that's a tongue twister, batik patterns of your own and see what you can come up with. It's a lot of fun doing the sort of dots with my gold pen around each of the pattern graphics. Um, yes, yeah, so I really recommend giving that a go if you like the look of this. Finally, just tying the other side of the page where the actual writing part will go and titling it the mind map. Now the mind map for those of you who are new to the channel is a space where I um, 
brain dump everything out um, and also it usually contains ideas that I'll have for whether it be for home or for career wise. I just put all my ideas on here and it's a place that I can go back to and just get things out that don't have other places to go in the journal. So it's a really helpful tool for me and just another way of checking things off and getting things out of your brain. If you're wondering what tools I use as well, I was using Prismacolor pencils and then just a bunch of Faber-Castell Pitt Artist pens, I think mainly for the textures. So all the markers are just water-based markers, any would do fine. But yeah, the skin I used Prismacolor pencils. And then as my old faithful for the gold is just a Uniball Signo Broad gold pen. And all the links to these supplies are actually on my website. There's a link down in the description box to see the webpage where I specify all the tools that I use. If you need to order anything, just check that out. And I did also notice that one of the pens that I was using, which was not a Faber-Castell one, uh, that really dark, beautiful teal green sort of colour ended up smudging everywhere and all over my hand and on the page, which was a bit of a bummer. Um, but what can you do? <laughs> and here's how the final page turned out. Okay, now moving on to my first weekly pages. Now, because there is four full weeks in July and just three extra days, I decided to put two full weeks and those three extra days onto this first double page sort of spread. And I tend to do some Dutch doors for my weeklies and I wanted to do that again. I just find it such an easier way of one, doing the setup but also feeling like there's not as much wastage going on. I mean, there probably is because I'm cutting some off anyway, but it just feels like more, um, more suitable for how I use my journal. And that is a, a cross pollination between art and planning. <laughs> so to illustrate here, I was looking into places that you explore when you go to Malaysia. And one of the things that came up that I certainly remember about my time in Malaysia when I was younger, um, is the beaches. They are known for incredible beaches, but also not to the point of them being over um, overpopulated and sort of commercialized. They're still sort of like a hidden, hidden treasure, but they look spectacular. Like the sand is white, the water is crystal clear, aqua blue, got palm trees everywhere, islands bouncing off the edges. It's just stunning. And so I wanted to illustrate that somehow onto this page because yeah, if you go to Malaysia, I am guaranteeing you, you must attend the beaches. Malaysia is actually made up of 878 islands. The ones you've probably heard of are Langkawi and Penang, but one that I had never heard of, but looked absolutely incredible in the photos was Perhentian Islands. And it just had this massive jetty going out into this crystal blue water and it was absolutely stunning. So if I get to Malaysia, or when I get to Malaysia, because I'm definitely keen to get there now, um, I definitely want to see that beach. It just looks so lonesome and untouched and just gorgeous. So I tried to picture what I would like to see at the beach um, on a beautiful sunny day. And I got me thinking of sunshine and another animal that's in Malaysia, and that is a sun bear. <laughs> so I thought I would have a sun bear sunning himself in a hammock at the beach, because why not? <laughs> it's just so random, but it's what I felt like doing. And this month I'm just kind of going with my gut and just illustrating what comes first to me naturally. So yeah, when I was researching about the animals you find in Malaysia, so many cool species came up and one of them is the sun bear. So I wanted to draw this sun bear chilling out in a hammock and of course I needed to get some more colour on this page because it wasn't colourful enough. So I thought I would use one of my washi tapes to add colour to it. I was having trouble choosing and my daughter was in the room and I just have to share this audio with you of her helping me choose. Oh, but it goes with the bear kind of. Bears, bears kind of like flowers and brownness. Quite. Mm. Sorry, Chicky. I found another brown one. Um, I kind of don't want brown. I want bright colours like these. 
Oh. How about you help me choose between this one with the bright green? Yeah, do you like that that one there? Or mm -mm. this one with the yellow? Hmm. Oh, I know one. I know. Just choose out of these two. Oh. I mean, I think I like the green. No. I'm not really sure. I think I like the yellow. You like the yellow? Yeah. All right. I'll let you choose, okay? So yellow it yeah. is. Bears kind of like yellow because, yeah, because when bears drink, bears like yellow because they sometimes eat. So there you have it. That's how my artistic choice of this washi tape came about. It was because it reminded Quinn of honey and honey bears. Now, I never really thought about where sun bears are found, but of course, the name reflects it. They're a tropical species and they're found in the tropical forests um, of Southeast Asia. And they're the smallest bear. They stand nearly 70 centimetres high from their shoulder to the ground. And that just seems so small. Um, and yeah, I just, I never really thought that they would be so close to us down here um, in Australia. I just always picture bears from being really Northern hemisphere kind of creatures. Um, but yeah, this, these sun bears in particular, I'm fascinated with. I love watching them at the zoo and seeing them there. The Perth Zoo has a couple in their um, enclosure and it's actually kind of sad because they they were saved from a really bad treatment and although they're lovely and healthy now and really well looked after um, they do tend to pace a lot sort of from their post-traumatic stress disorder that they suffer with so very sad but beautiful creatures so I was quite happy to draw him chilling here in the magical hammock in Malaysia. Also you see me creating the actual days of the week on these pages now and I didn't want to cut straight down the middle of where the spine is on my books because I found that they do tend to come apart in time when you're constantly flipping back and forth. So whenever I'm doing a Dutch door now I try my best to avoid slicing down the spine section. Um, so yeah that's why I've got this little palm tree coming across into the next week. Um, pages. It just kind of adds more interest as well. It just keeps the book a bit safer. So I definitely recommend trying that if you haven't done so already. And then this is how the first bunch of weeklies turned out. Now moving on to the final page of this setup, and this one is a little bit of a bizarre one again. Um, I did want to have a look into what people kind of do when in Malaysia. There was a lot of beautiful sites that I could have illustrated, so I will mention them, um, like special mentions, and that is the Sky Bridge in Langkawi, the amazing limestone pinnacles in Gunung Mulu National Park, and then I was really tempted by the Malacca city and the Georgetown buildings because of the colours there. As soon as I seem to see colourful buildings, I am just amazed by them and I immediately want to draw them. Um, but I tried to hold, well, not that I held back, I just felt like doing something else in my research. So I, I kind of wish I got on to drawing the buildings of Georgetown or Malacca City, but I didn't. Um, so just a quick mention that they look awesome. If you are planning a trip to Malaysia, definitely check those places out. I think they'd be really cool to see in real life. Instead, I decided to focus on a favorite thing of what you could do in Malaysia as well and what it's kind of known for, and that is the shopping. So the shopping in Malaysia is huge and a big part of the culture. And one of the, one of the very, very famous designers is from Malaysia, and I'm sure you'll know his name, and that is Jimmy Chu. And so when I found out that he was Malaysian and a star in his own right for fashion design, I thought, I feel like drawing some shoes. Some fancy shoes would be fun to do. I've never done that in my bullet journal. I haven't, in fact, I don't think I've ever drawn a shoe really before. Uh, I might have, I'm not sure, but definitely not these kind of fancy shoes. So I just felt like doing that and sticking with my instincts this setup round, I decided to just wing it and draw some shoes on this last page. And I had a lot of fun again. It was just such a random thing to draw yet I had a really good time 
So Jimmy Choo's designs are super out there and so I found one that had a lot of ribbons on it and a sort of, the other one was sort of like crystals. And then I just used um, unusual tools that I'm not used to using, which is gel pens. I just used a pink gel pen for the first shoe and then used my washi tape to tie in some color in the shoe behind. So that was a little bit of a mishmash of items for this month's theme. Um, like I said, I just wanted to draw what I felt like drawing at the time and sort of be less literal with the research that I make instead of, you know, drawing straight from a reference photo of a place to go. I just felt like getting inspired from an element from the country and then seeing where I went with it. I had a really good time. I hope you enjoyed watching. And now before I go, I'm going to make the choices for our September setup, which does seem ages away, but um, this is July. We've already got August sorted with the winning entry of Kenya, which I'm super excited to get started on. So for now, before the final flip through, of these pages, um, stick around and we'll make the choices from the jars. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and this setup. If you did, please click the like button down below and consider subscribing to the channel to see more of my videos and the discovery of each country that I visit each month. Don't forget to leave me your vote down below of which country you wanna see in a couple of months. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you are all well and I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed traveling a little bit through Malaysia. And now if you can help me by deciding on from these options that I'm about to choose out of my jars, um, the country for our September month in the bullet journal. So starting with the big countries. So these are a bunch of big countries that I put into the jar a while back now. Um, so they've got over 30 million people. I'm swiveling it all around and I have one, I have one. It is Brazil. Brazil would be so fun to explore. I'd love to go to Brazil. I have a friend from Brazil, Brazil from Brazil. So that would be really cool to learn more about that place. And now we have the medium sized countries and I'm mixing them around. These are populations between 8 million and 30 million. Okay, giving it a good shuffle, to see what we get. And we have one, we have, oh, oh no, we have two. <gasps> I have to throw one away, throw one away. Okay, we have Nepal. Ooh, that could be fun to explore too. Another place I would like to go, do some mountain climbing. I've never climbed a mountain in my life, but I would love to, and I'd like to do it in Nepal. <laughs> and then the final jar contains the small countries with the populations beneath 8 million. So I'm doing a good shuffle around, seeing what we get. I have one, and the lucky last one is Paraguay or Paraguay. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. I know nothing about Paraguay. I'm sure it's beautiful and I'd love to explore there, but where would you like to see me explore? Don't forget to leave me a comment down below. We've got Brazil, Nepal, and Paraguay. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.